All right, welcome to another episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. And I got to tell you, I'm excited today on this Veterans Day to uh, acknowledge a warrior that I've encountered in my life. And we'll, as always, get to that in a second. But let me talk about Warrior vs. Zombie. Success is a journey, it's not a destination. As warriors, we all have a history of ups and downs, wins and losses that are all part of making us who we are up to this point and they provide a foundation for our path forward. We all battle our inner zombie as well as those zombies in our world. In each episode, I interview warriors who are aspiring leaders from all walks of life, entrepreneurs, artists, health practitioners, business owners, investors, art entrepreneurs of all types and all walks of life. Really, any inspired leader that has a story to tell, these warriors have always have a cause, they have value, and they have a vision that goes generations into the future. And today's guest, as always, is no exception. Mimi Madden is an incredible warrior. She's a wife, a mother, a teacher, an entrepreneur, coach, connector, and nonprofit advocate. She inspires and encourages others to reach their full human potential. Mimi is a connector of people and projects, and during her journey, she's been in the arts her whole life, dance, music, poetry, ceramics, and she believes that we all benefit from incorporating art and creativity into our, our lives, and I would agree with that. As a visionary, she has been an advocate for good causes, for mission-based organizations, and for innovative approaches that make our lives better. Mimi has directed performing arts series that emphasize the community experience. She's raised funds for programs and capital projects. And at her current nonprofit, she's all about honoring work and workers in America. Finally, as an entrepreneur, Mimi is working with a publicly traded company to help pioneer a medical advance that addresses cellular health in a way never before possible. Mimi Madden. Welcome to Warrior vs. Zombie, and how are you on this Veterans Day? I'm great. Thank you, Dave. It's great to be here with you. Well, and I'm very, very excited. We've known each other for a bit now. We've had a few of these conversations, and frankly, that's what Warrior vs. Zombie is. It's simply a conversation. We're going to go through uh, your story and so on. One of the things I wanted to say today, just to get it out there, and I know your your husband is a Vietnam veteran, and and uh, just for any of the veterans that are listening to us today, I want you to know that I'm very thankful. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful. So um, anyway, um, how's things in uh, your neck of the woods? Since I'm in Dallas, uh, <laughs> what, what part of the world are you in, Mimi? I'm in New England in Connecticut, and um, it's a lovely time of year, but getting nippy, but the beautiful colors of the leaves up here. Um, yeah, <laughs> enjoying it. Yeah, I, you know, in Dallas, that's one of the things. I lived in Michigan for 18 years and got all the snow I ever wanted to have in my life. <laughs> and, uh, but I love the, the colors and stuff this time of year, but I think it's supposed to, they're saying tomorrow it might get down in the below 40 here in Dallas. So I'm, I'm, I'm not used to it anymore. I've been here about 22 years and it's, uh, uh, I, I don't have that constitution. So, but you, I do. You've want... gone soft, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I used to really get a kick out of the people that I, when I first moved here about, you know, times like today, I would be uh, wearing shorts and uh, short sleeve <laughs> shirt and, and enjoying things and everybody in Dallas would be wearing, you know, mufflers and, <laughs> and heavy jackets and things. So, so anyway, well, uh, so things are going good in your area. The weather's beautiful. Uh, life is getting back to normal, I, uh, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh, any other things going on in your world of, uh, of note? Well, I always get excited when my brood of kids comes home and everybody's coming home starting tomorrow. Even my daughter flying in from North Carolina and you have quite a uh, sort of a nonstop party with all of those lively people. So that's, uh, that's what's coming up. <laughs> oh, well, man, that is, you know, my, I live my ideal day every day and having space in that day for my five kids and now six grandkids and all that stuff is, 
is at the top of the list. So <laughs> making provision for that, and I, I totally get the uh, the excitement and energy that you're looking forward to. So uh, that's a beautiful thing. Well, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back and we'll hear your story a little bit. And here, in for those in the audio audience, we'll hear a little bit of Ricky Jean Wright, and it's not the getting there. And we'll be right back with Warrior vs. Zombie and Mimi Madden. All right, we are back. And Mimi, as I indicated to you earlier and where we're at at this point in our discussion is I really want to hear how you got from wherever you started to today. And then we'll take another break. So how's that sound? That sounds great. And um, as I was thinking about this conversation with you, Dave, which I've been looking forward to, um, I was thinking of a few, maybe you could say themes in my early life that have carried through to the present and have made a big difference. And, and uh, you know, actually from the age of four, when I learned how to read, books have been a huge um, source of inspiration in my life. Being able to enter people's lives through literature, you know, all the way through college where I studied literature, um, I've always felt that that reading good books is like studying psychology because it's all about understanding people and relationships and understanding really kind of a foundation for emotional intelligence in my life and empathy. Um, later in my life, I actually studied personality theory and have used it professionally and, and personally, but you know, people fascinate me. So that's been a, a big theme in my life. Um, also just a, a real love for the outdoors. I somehow growing up in suburban Hartford was able to find kind of magical places um, even on the edges of our neighborhood. And, and then when I was maybe 13, my family started going up to the main coast for summers and I fell in love, had actually like felt like a love affair with the main coast and I sort of pine away, no, no pun intended, um, during, during the winter. Um, you know, it's just a place of adventure and discovery, which I, I love still to this day. Um, and I guess another very strong theme, which I know we share, is um, from a pretty young age, uh, a, a very deep awareness of a, of a personal God who, who loves me and is expressed in the creation especially. Um, and that, that spiritual faith and relationship has been really a plumb line in my life through all the ups and downs. And, you know, we all have a lot of ups and downs in our lives. Um, so I had a pretty conventional upbringing with two pretty practical parents, but I am a creative spirit and it did emerge. And I began to um, really be drawn to the arts and, you know, studied and participated in visual arts and ceramics and um, especially the performing arts, music, uh, playing instruments and singing. I still sing in an a cappella group today. It brings me a lot of joy and um, dance seriously when I was younger, still dance today. So um, it's good for the soul. And uh, I ended up at a fairly young age starting my family and um, having a fairly large family like you, my tribe. And when my oldest was about two, I happened to read a book by a very well-known educator, John Holt, who had been a public school reformer but he had written a book called Teach Your Own. Um, even though he didn't have children, he became an advocate for homeschooling. Um, and what caught my attention, which again has to do with my love of learning, um, is he identified that there's a continuum of learning for children. Children are insatiable, curiosity, asking questions and soaking it all up. And then school often can be a big interruption where the tables turned, and kids are told what they need to learn and to give correct answers. So, you know, my kids, I, I did homeschool for many years. They also went into schools, all of them. So I'm not against school by any means, but it had been, um, it was a wonderful part of our family culture. And um, I, I think it was the most valuable work I've done, even though I never earned a paycheck, but I was able to create a culture of um, creativity and discovery that I wish I could have grown up with. So. That was a, a wonderful part of my life. And um, as they got older, I ended up, as you mentioned in your intro, uh, working in the nonprofit arts world, kind of again, being drawn in backwards. Um, a very well-known composer musician asked if I would run a performing arts series actually out of a church. And it was baptism by fire, which seems to be the way that I have done my life. You know, I get in over my head and figure out how to swim. 
So I learned a lot about um, management in the nonprofit world. And I especially loved um, what those performances did in terms of creating an experience for the audience where, you know, we would stop and get off of the, the treadmill and really be able to wonder at life and at what it means to be human. Um, that's some of the power that I've loved in those things. And then uh, later on, I worked uh, for many years at a museum doing a lot of the fundraising, but I ended up also directing a, a very uh, well-known poetry festival with national poets. Um, and it was a privilege really to, to be able to do that. And again, learning my capabilities as I went. Um, and, and I know that, you know, I think about my challenges along the way. Um, uh, I, I think really is that old imposter syndrome, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners can relate to. Um, it's really common, but unlike a lot of people that I meet in my networking and um, probably a lot of the people that you interview, um, I haven't had a long corporate career. I didn't set out and get advanced degrees to become a, a something. Um, not a best-selling author, not a speaker, don't really have, a, have an ambition to. Um, and, and actually, on the personal side, I had a, I guess I'd say a long history of allowing very dominant, forceful personalities to, you know, take the upper hand in my life, um, which can really undermine your confidence and your view of yourself. And uh, my unspoken role was that I was supposed to be supporting people with, with a calling better and bigger and more important. Um, so, you know, through major upheavals, um, kind of getting through taking some painful steps to extricate myself from some of that and, um, and being thin skinned and it being rather traumatic to, uh, to stand up against that. I, it's been a way to develop resilience and gratitude and, you know, all of those good things, I guess. So that's a very quick summary. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that is a quick summary. And, and so. A uh, number of things that you've, you've hit on, which are very powerful. One is um, the whole concept of learning is not relegated to an institution, but in fact, something that we manifest in our lives. And the fact that you started that at a very early age um, with books. And now, um, as I always say, warriors continue to learn by in joining or aligning with other warriors on their journey. You can do that so many ways today, right? You can do that in your um, networking groups. You can do that online, but you have to be intentional. And that's the thing that, that you really talked about. I think that uh, the other thing you mentioned just at the end here is um, kind of your own zombies. And you didn't call it that, but I'm going to call it that. But the <laughs> the zombies in our mind that says, hey, I'm not important. I don't have a story to tell. My my vision isn't worth um, anything or somebody else relegating somebody else's importance or, you know, putting you below those. And the reality of it is some of us are meant to be out front and some of us are really behind the scenes making the people out front be successful and i think all are warriors so so when you say that um i totally get it i've been in roles where i wasn't the guy standing in the pulpit i was the guy you know behind the scenes making things work and i think we all have as warriors have that role in some aspect of our lives the other thing i love is and we talked about this before is your your hands-on recognition that if the next generation is going to be what we want it to be, we have to be in control. Doesn't mean we have to homeschool. I don't know that I could have ever homeschooled. <laughs> yeah, but not for I everybody. Did, but I did run a small Christian school. I could do that, but I didn't. Um, but I couldn't actually um, see myself doing the day-to-day -day teaching. But as a parent we don't, we can't step back from that responsibility, no matter who is actually doing the mechanics of educating our children. So I love, love that about your story. Uh, of all of the, the zombies, if you will, um, you know, you, you kind of went through those. And the thing I love about warriors, by the way, and you don't have to be a warrior with a book and all these other things is we all, and I say we, because I'm the same way, 
we all have to keep focused forward. We all have to minimize, you know, the zombies that we've encountered and not focus on those because they will inhi inhibit us from moving forward. What would you say is the biggest zombie you've overcome? And I know that we've all yeah. at this juncture overcome a lot, but what would you say? Yeah, well, you know, I think um, I've had a, a kind of a conflict in me. I am by nature an early adopter. I get things ahead of the time when they're accepted. And then I'm also by nature somebody who feels driven to advocate for those things, you know, to, for improvement and, and change. And I'm a thin skinned person and I didn't, you know, so you put that together and you have somebody who, um, really has struggled to uh, grow a thicker skin because often when you are out ahead of the pack with something, you may know it's absolutely true. You may know it has value, um, but it, people can be very dismissive and harsh and um, opinionated. And um, so I guess that the zombie really being um, my own, my own uh, thin skinnedness, <laughs> if that's a word, and learning to uh, to be stronger and to be strengthened and to remember, like for me, the biggest thing is turning it around uh, that I have a gift to offer, um, and it's not about me. So it's it's made a big difference there. Well, that is brilliant on so many levels. I don't even think you even realize how brilliant that is that you connected those dots because when you were talking, I said, yeah, I I now know you well enough to know that um, that is a real zombie because being myself um, an early adopter that means when you're when you say you're early adopter okay if you really understand that I mean I, I have an MBA for more and I mean I, I I can tell you that means that you, there's less than significantly yes less usually than 85% or than there's 15% of the people 85% of the people that you encounter are not going to understand or even embrace what it is in any area, technology, new trends. And so I am, that's my superpower is connecting the dots, seeing dots that other people don't see, and then seeing how they can go forward. And just being able to try and explain that, you're gonna get such a mass, massive amount of feedback that says that's stupid or, mm -hmm. or yeah. be dismissive of it and make you feel as though um, what you're, what you're thinking is something's wrong with it. And so, um, I totally get that. And being able to push forward through that, uh, and not think about what others are going to say is probably a skill that every warrior today <laughs> needs to have because the zombie herd is pretty large and there's many people that will, um, especially if you're not towing the party line, if you will, um, it's a challenge. Well, that's, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's very authentic. And just the fact, the takeaways from that are brilliant. Well, let's do this. Let's take another quick break. I want to talk, I want to get into where you are today, because I know you're doing some exciting stuff focused on work and workers. And I know you're also doing some things that I'm actually participating in <laughs> with uh, health and wellness, which is a passion of mine as well. And we have warriors that are in that space that listen to us. So let's take a quick break. We'll hear a little more from Ricky Jean Wright, and we'll come back and talk about where you are today with Mimi Madden and the Warrior vs. Zombie. <laughs> All right, we are back. And Mimi, very good. Thank you for your story. I know there's a whole lot more to tell because you and I have had a lot of lengthy conversations. And that's one of the challenges getting this compressed into, you know, 30 minute time frame was was is always a challenge. And so uh, but tell me about number one, why the things you're doing, but then why you're doing what you're doing, the unique value you think you believe you provide, and if anything were possible, what kind of impact would you like to have with where you are today? Sure, thanks, Dave. Uh, so currently I do two things, and I'll tell you first about the, the arts project. It's, it's really pretty wonderful. So about seven years ago, um, I had left the museum and the poetry festival for various reasons, because of a toxic director, by the way, but um, uh, 
this artist um, had uh, come to me because she needed help. She had been working on a project, an idea she had at that point about 15 years to create a massive mural that was going to honor work in this country. She had already worked with thousands of kids on various projects in different states. Her own kids, she always said, were clueless about um, the wonder and excitement and value of different kinds of work that she was doing with large mission portraits. So she wanted to make a statement that nobody could ignore. So she had somehow gotten about a million dollar state challenge grant. Um, we always kid that it's through stalking. Um, you know, she was stalking the governor until he finally just to get her up. But we had to raise uh, more than that to, uh, to have the money. And it was to renovate an old mill building in order to finally install what she'd been creating for all those years. Um, she's very unconventional, more so than me. Um, I thought this could be fun and challenging out of the box, somehow we raised the money. Um, you know, we were laughing yesterday, we call ourselves Selma and Louise. We did keep it legal, however, but, um, but you know, you kind of do things and you look back, you know, how do we do that? But she is a real insp inspiration. Um, people, of course, just like we were talking about all along the way thought she was crazy. And, you know, it would be nice if someone else give her money, but her determination and her work effort uh, is just raised a bar in my life. I, I love and um, admire her tremendously. Um, and just that the importance of that um, that honoring work. So you know, I know you use zombies uh, as an image in certain ways, but but the Walking Dead. Okay, anytime we can wake ourselves up to something important, and we spend most of our waking hours doing some kind of work, and it really matters how we do that. So there's a beautiful mission and a lot of related programs coming out of it. Uh, we you know, it, it's it's a long story. I will just say that the topic of work in itself has been one of great interest to me. We've talked about this, but you know, the issue of how does an individual find what aligns with their uh, with their gifts, what energizes them, how you can contribute the most to a business or an organization. Um, I love reading books, a kind of informal student on um, successful workplaces, like especially applying emotional intelligence into the business culture and seeing it transform uh, the experience for workers, the loyalty and the bottom line. I just, you know, it, it's good psychology and um, it, it really makes sense. So um, yeah, so that's one thing I'm doing and uh, very passionate about it. And I, I'm the development director. Um, I've helped bring in a lot of people to staff it with Ellen as it's grown. We have wonderful programs for kids and. Um, not quite installed and not quite open, but for anybody listening, um, take a look at AmericanMuralProject.org because it's a wonderful thing and you can go and, you know, see the visuals. Um, there's a great virtual uh, event on there, something to look at. And so, you know, through all my now 25 years in the nonprofit sector, I have raised, I've raised over millions of dollars for good causes, but to be very honest, I didn't really... Um, and Dave, you'll, you'll get this, but I didn't really have a, an understanding of money, like how money worked. I, I um, accidentally became an entrepreneur because of this health breakthrough that I'll, I'll tell about in a minute. But um, it, I, I think that the light bulb went on for me when I realized that all of these mission-based organizations and programs that the world needs so much, they're mainly funded by people who have figured out how to make money work for you um, to take away the trading hours for dollars uh, scenario. And my father had been traditional, had done the investing and saving and I hadn't. So, um, so anyway, you know, having advocated, I wasn't really comfortable that I was going to be in business, but I had advocated for things, which is selling in a way, you know, it's um, selling with heart, I guess I'd say. Um, so, you know, if you think in terms of honoring work, um, my journey really began, began because of the work of one man. Um, and I'll tell this story quickly, but I, it's, it's one of the things I love the most. So there was a scientist at Duke University um, back in the 60s who uh, discovered a, a core system in our body. And it's such an important discovery that uh, later he was awarded what's called the Smithsonian's Crescent Medal for top discoveries uh, awarded to people like Madame Curie, Alexander Graham Bell, Tesla, the Wright brothers, Henry Ford, on and on. So. Um, the reason it was so important because that system, as they studied it over the years, they realized when it works well, pours out antioxidants for we're young, we're healthy generally. 
as it slows down, which it does for everybody, even if you are doing everything for fitness and eating well, um, it slows and that's the cause of increasing cell damage or for anybody who's in health and wellness, oxidative stress, you know that term, I didn't at the time. But that um, is the cause of aging and over 200 diseases. So basically they had found um, the core cause and they thought for a while, all these scientists in this field, um, that maybe they could uh, supplement what we didn't do well as we aged, but they found out it really didn't touch the problem. So it's supplementation only has, it has limitations. Um, so the best part of this story that I love is that Dr. McCord asked a different question. He thought outside of the box. And I like to remember this. We, you know, we need to always be willing to ask the questions, even if they seem silly or irrelevant, or maybe the answer is obvious. So he wondered that in, in, instead of taking the supplement approach, could it possibly, you know, could it be possible to turn the original system back on? And it was a resounding yes. Um, he did it, they, this group of scientists did it. Actually, the other Western medicine, they did it with a synergistic combination of herbs. It's another great theme that we've talked about is synergy, you know, the multiplication of good things. Um, and it, and it, it, they found that within a month, there was a, a drastic 40% shift in that cell damage. So our, because our body is an amazing healing machine. So I, I like this analogy that we lose our power up here a lot, okay? It's one of the problems in the winter with the storms and all the trees. Um, and when we do, we have a lot of resources. We get candles, generator, flashlights, you know, fires. Um, we have wood stoves for that. But when the power company fixes the, the main problem, there's just no comparison. So it is the difference because just like our house, this system is already wired into every cell. So the beauty is that the, the switch can go on. And, um, and I've loved seeing, I love being part of something that truly is considered a historic breakthrough um, to see now almost 20,000 published studies where they're trying to create um, drugs that activate the system. So it's a big area of focus. Um, and it's, it's been um, very rewarding to share this with people because of the, you were asking about impact, like what impact do I want to have? So um, I, I think with the, with the, the American Mural Project obviously waking people up to appreciate and honor work and extend that appreciation to others because it's transformative. For this, it is waking up our body's system that's there. So again, it's like a, an activation theme, the human potential, um, but to see what that means to different people because you have one core problem and you can resolve it sensibly, naturally, and, um, and then to see where the body uh, can adjust and help. And the biggest, prevent, the biggest thing really is prevention. You know, the sexy stories are when somebody has a dramatic you know, improvement, but really the long range is this is at the genetic level. So you know, if somebody's scientific listening to this, go look at the science of NRF2 activation. It is a phenomenal, um, phenomenal product. And um, I'm always here to have conversations for people interested in learning about the first original, uh, original one. Well, that's awesome. So, um, first of all, let me say, thinking about where you are and your your aspiration, why you're doing what you're doing, it's very obvious that you're 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 doing what you're doing to leave a legacy, to make an impact, to make an impact on not only uh, waking people up to the value of work, which I think today is an extremely, extremely important, uh, you know, on this Veterans Day, we have to, uh, we want to acknowledge all of those who have been willing to lay down their lives for their brothers and sisters and the country that they serve, but also the workers. Uh, we've, we've seen that through 2020. We've seen that the essential workers, well, work is essential. It doesn't matter um, what your job title is or what part of it. One of the things that I think most of us have come to realize during this time, the year that was, the things that we've dealt with is the fact that work is valuable. And now I'm thinking about uh, your journey and now we are also very aligned and we were from the beginning about the belief that we have a, a miraculous creation called our, our body, mind, and spirit that can 
do almost anything that we can imagine if we support it in doing that. And whether it's uh, the supplement that you're talking about or whatever, it's, it's a holistic thing, right? There's all kinds of things. And having something, you know, something that will enable us to turn things around or to augment um, our body's natural systems as opposed to treating a symptom. I mean, again, the line that I draw is the thing that I didn't realize until later in life was that it, my body is a miraculous creation. Uh, lifestyle, supplementation, what I put in it, uh, how I move it, how I hydrate it, and then subsequently how I supplement and or help the systems is mm -hmm. the way that we move forward in our journey to having that life of, of vitality and things that we want to have. And right. as you know, I don't have the audience might as well know I am uh, consuming <laughs> the product that she's talking about. You are activating yourself, Dave, and right? <laughs> myself, which I was always already on the journey. And, and I have right. to say that I I am noticing some things. I've had uh, some some things done. So let's do this. I'm going to take another quick break. And when I come back, uh, Mimi, what I would like for you to share with the audience is anything you would like to make sure that we take away from this podcast and then come make sure we understand how we can stay in touch with you as we go forward. So with that, let's take another break. Let's hear a little more of Ricky Jean Wright and it's not to get in there. And we'll be back with Mimi Madden and Warrior vs. Zombie. Dave, do you put something in of a link for me or anything, or should I give, I, I we didn't really land on a phone number. Um, I don't have my own web. I mean, I don't want to really give the Life Vantage website. I'm not sure what. what um, I'll, on, the, on, on the replays and everything I can post, I'll, if you have any links you want to, to share, sure. I'll share those on the, the YouTube channel as well mm -hmm. as in other descriptions. So yeah, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll make that okay. happen. Okay. okay. All right. So let's, we'll come back here. All right. We are back. And Mimi, it's been an awesome journey. Um, I am more impressed with you today than I've ever been. And uh, it continues that journey. So thank you for being willing to share with the audience. And, and frankly, you definitely need uh, going forward to get more familiar with Mimi and her journey and the things she's doing because she is making an impact. And that's what I love about Warrior vs. Zombie. We, we believe everybody has a story to tell. We believe everybody has, uh, is a warrior if they're, trying, if they're doing what they can to move forward in their own intention and you're doing that in spades. All right, so um, I've given you a little bit of runway here. What, what would you want us to take away from this podcast if we took away anything? Well, um, I think that the belief that you can make it happen for yourself, um, we all come with different pieces given to us, different experiences. We all have a ton of potential that we don't tap into in many, many ways. Um, and it's a more exciting, rewarding life to, be, to have a, a growth mindset. And the more you start on that journey, the more you find people, that's how I found you, Dave, um, you know, more, more you find people who are on the journey, more resources for kind of an expansion of yourself and your expectations in life. Um, one of my favorite uh, mentors is Darren Hardy. I always mention him. Um, and it's interesting because I took a course on productivity last year. I'm taking a course with him on leadership. But it's those two pieces that I think are most helpful, no matter what somebody is aiming to achieve in their life. Um, I think we all need the two things. We need the, the big vision. We need to make sure we know where we're headed. Um, and then what Darren Hardy's whole big thing is his gospel is uh, that consistency is queen. So you really then need to figure out how to um, shift things on a daily basis in your life so that you are incorporating small steps that you do over and over again. And, you know, I, I was even looking back these last thinking just the last two years. So COVID's had a lot of silver linings for many of us, which a big one is to connect with people anywhere like we're doing now. Um, but I 
just it's so grateful to see a real shift in the last two years. You know, so if you get on the trajectory towards something positive, uh, where you want to create an impact and make a difference with your life, and then you devote yourself, give some time to the discipline of, um, you know, of how to get there and the little steps. Because what Darren Hardy always says is, you know, you have your big, hairy, audacious goals, your stairway. Um, you know what's up there. They break it into the steps, but he says, don't get up and look up to the top every day. You get there and just look at that step. But if you know what you're doing every day and you know that it will get to where you want to go, um, it does, you do get traction, you do get momentum. And um, it's, it's the beauty. It's what I love the most, I guess, about so much of this arena of, um, of human potential, because we have such ability to shift and to go in a good direction with our lives. Well, that's very powerful. And, um, I'm sure Darren, if he listens to this podcast, will be uh, very inspired. Um, frankly, if you listen to the theme song of this podcast, you'll hear the message that you just described, which is basically it's a journey every day. Um, it's not a race to see how many people know your name. One day you'll realize time is worth more than the gold. We're investing our most valuable asset here, and it doesn't happen. Uh, it's most people um, being the vision warrior myself, um, I think shying away from that big, hairy, audacious goal or whatever is something a lot of people do because it makes you uncomfortable because you're not there, right? So knowing that that's a one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, uh, continuing to move forward uh, is a beautiful thing. And it's also something that every warrior that is actually continuing to move forward is doing every day. They're taking that next step in spite of whatever zombies are. And can I just add, Dave, that I, I love connecting with people. I love knowing people, meeting people. So in addition to whatever links that, that you'll share, uh, you can always text to set up a call with me or Zoom um, 860-485-2208. And um, I like to be, you know, authentic and real, and it's all about building relationships. So. Well, you probably get a lot of. Um, I'm not sure why we're getting that feedback, but um, we're going to get a lot of people reaching out. And one of the easiest ways, and this is the thing, is I get 35 personally. I get 35 requests a day to connect to follow up with me on LinkedIn from some of my 10,000 connections. And uh, one of the things is with the Be Connected platform that we have, uh, they can connect with you on Be Connected. So anybody that's watching this replay uh, from the live in the hive, uh, that would be a, a place to reach out to Mimi. I'm actually channeling personally all of my connection requests, even ones that are people that are physically here suggesting that they they get uh, connected to me on that platform, get Great ready platform. Yep. Yeah. so that they can do that. So uh, just as a, an aside, so uh, text you um, any other places. Um, I, I think be connected is, is important. Is there anything That's else great. you want to share? Or is that good? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I wish. Yeah, but we'll 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 put that. We'll post it. Okay. And um, yeah, happy to. Happy all right. Well, Mimi, it's been a great, great journey. And thank you. Thank you for sharing with our audience. Um, I, I love your story. I love what we've heard. For those that are uh, for finding us for the first time or uh, listening to this, we this is episode 49. And there are plenty of other warrior discussions and there'll be many more coming forward. We're also audio on every platform. So if you're not watching this, replay from uh, the Be Connected platform. You're you're watching it on YouTube or uh, listening to it on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, you name it, anywhere, Amazon Music Podcasts, anywhere you want to find a podcast, it'll be there. So with that, let's hear the final outro of It's Not the Getting There with the Ricky Jean Wright and uh, We'll be back next Thursday, 11 a.m. Central, for the next episode of Warrior vs. Zombie. Thank you, Dave. Thank you.